Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox. This is the introduction to cloud computing and its use in big data, commonly called data engineering, or it's sort of a practical data science. And we're in the Department of Intelligent Systems Engineering. And this uh, set of uh, slides will introduce you to basic why clouds are so important, how they relate to supercomputers, what is a container, and things like that. And it will give some general introduction to the trends in the industry and also the importance of big data. This work is with uh, Judy Chu, Gregor Moleszewski, and Martin Sweeney. And uh, let's go. Hi, everybody. This is the beginning of the beginning for this cloud overview. And in this uh, section here, which is called Section A, it summarizes the remaining sections, B through U. And um, each of these is around 8 to 20 slides, and it covers a subtopic of this uh, introduction. And um, the uh, section A has a few of the subtopics on each page. Here we have uh, four of the subtopics. Say A is what we're on now, B is the first real subtopic, and it defines clouds uh, initially, gives you it defines a cloud. Gives you a couple of examples of virtualization. It discusses high performance computing and supercomputers and why they're either the same or different from clouds. It discusses why multi core has had such a big impact on the field. And it describes typical data centers. We'll do more of that later on. Then we have um, more on defining clouds. These are uh, three sections here on defining clouds are broken up because the whole section will be too big otherwise. Uh, because you're, we're trying to aim at around 15 minutes plus or minus for the actual uh, each section. And here we do the most important, very general principle, service-oriented architectures. Where we stress that services are just self-contained entities which receive messages and send messages. It is important to realize that messaging is the fundamental mechanism for things to communicate with each other. And that's actually quite important, because um, this allows things to be made modular and independent, and why we have things like microservices, which are very small independent entities. It's much easier to have lots of people working on a project if each is building a separate microservice or service, because they have such well-defined APIs. Whereas if you just build part of a system, that part of a system can interact with other parts in complicated ways if you produce suitable spaghetti code. Then we have various so-called as-a-service, um, network as-a-service, infrastructure as-a-service, platform as-a-service, software as-a-service, later we'll see function as-a-service. And then we look at all the incredible services that today's commercial clouds are. That's true for all the clouds, IBM, Google as well, and Baidu and what have you. But we just do Amazon and Azure, which are already very impressive. Then we look at some analysis by the Gartner Company on clouds, where most critical point is the clouds are the norm. They are, it's not, when I started these talks around 2008 to 10, clouds were just starting, and they were trying to challenge the establishment. Now they are the establishment, and that tr people try to challenge them, or more actually realistically, evolve them. And here we see how serverless computers and microservices are part of that evolution. Uh, Gartner has things called hype cycles, and we do that, and the so associated priority matrix for so-called infrastructure strategies, which is how you put together giant data centers. In the next subsection, number three, we do market share, <coughs> where Amazon and Microsoft are sort of dominant, with Google and IBM hanging in, and possibly slightly increasing in the case of Google. Uh, then we um, actually again quantify why clouds are important, and how much money they make, which is pretty high. And then the final section on this uh, sheet, uh, e is on virtualization, it's more technical. We look at the various technologies, we discuss hypervisors and the different approaches to hypervisors. 
Let me give some examples, KVMs and Docker and OpenStack. So that's uh, this first four um, um, unit, uh, units, which are, sorry, they're called lessons. The first four lessons, and each of those lessons is a separate video on YouTube. The whole set of lessons make up a unit, and this is the unit called Introduction to Cloud. Then we go more on hype cycles, because hype cycles are fun, because they tell you what's important. And we do that, the hype cycle for emerging technologies after going through the general principles of hype cycles. We look at the different phases they have, which has been true for a long time. We look at the priority matrix, which has benefits and adoption time. And actually today, our clouds are no longer on most of the hype cycles. Because they've emerged. When you go through a hype cycle, you eventually become unhyped. You reach the so called plateau of productivity and you leave the hype cycle. And then what lives on the hype cycle are features like serverless or application, those that's a feature of a cloud or applications of cloud like machine learning and blockchain. Um, and we not only do the hype cycles for emerging technologies, which is the over overweening hype cycle. We do the one for data center infrastructure, because that's what clouds are. Clouds are just ways of building giant data centers with whatever they are, some 50 million servers in total on the cloud data centers. Uh, the next uh, um, lesson is hype cycle number two. Again, we divided one F, we divided uh, F and G because technology hype cycles will take more than one lesson. If we want to keep them to a reasonable size. And we do hype cycles for um, emerging technologies and priority matrix for the past, when we really see clouds emerging. When they started, they were much more cautious about how quickly they would take over. So, um, and I say that you will find clouds are essentially a star in the emerging technology uh, hype cycle from 2008 to today. And they're all mixed up with various disruptive and transformational changes. And we discussed one of those, how to do digital business, which came out in 2015 from Gartner. So, okay, here we have the third sheet on um, the different uh, lessons in um, this whole, in this unit. And these discuss two lessons on cloud infrastructure, getting chopped into two for space reasons. And we look at trends in the data center and its associated technologies. We look at how clouds are spread across the world. There's some 600 data centers, 50 million servers, and each of the major vendors have over 100 um, different data centers. And they obviously vary in size. We look a little bit about green computing, because um, Clouds are designed to be the world's most efficient because they're they're getting an economy from scale. They're most efficient in terms of power use and operational costs, and we are that has some implication for green computing. And then we look at the fraction of the world's computing ecosystem and clouds and the associated sizes of number of virtual machines, number of servers, networking, etc., amount of data. The next uh, lesson here, Cloud Infrastructure 2, has the Gartner hype cycle and priority matrix on compute infrastructure. It compares containers like Docker and Kubernetes with virtual machines. And it looks at the most important trend at the moment, the emergence of AI as a dominant force. Uh, the last one on this page, J, is cloud software, where we have the whole so-called high performance computing enhanced Apache Big Data Stack. 350 software packages, they're arranged in 21 groups or layers, and we describe how the role that each layer has. We um, highlight Google, which has made many of the innovations in this area, because they, they're often doing the largest problems, and possibly these problems first. We look at MapReduce, uh, and an uh, overview, drawing a nice pretty picture from Judy Chu on this. And uh, we compare the cloud and the high performance computing software stacks. Then we look at um, 
how you support clouds and distributed systems. And we discuss uh, something important for parallel computing, so-called single instruction multiple data, where all computers run the same thing but have different data. And what's more, what is actually the cloud architecture, uh, single program multiple data. This is not the only cloud, but where one job. Each job in a cloud is a different program, but one job, like a dupe, will typically run the same program on each map, so-called mapper. And uh, so it's single program, but then each mapper has different data. So that's SPMD. These are simple classifications to the overall structure of parallel programs. And clouds are always running everything in parallel. All right. All right. Then we have a little discussion of applications, three sets of slides here. The first set is a set of rather old slides, and I try to update them, but it's difficult. People were very excited when big data started. They produced beautiful slides, and then they gave up because the world agreed with them. Big data is important. So they stopped producing beautiful slides, and so we have to use the old slides. Then we look at a set of pretty interesting uses patterns, which are uh, drawn up by uh, Bob Marcus and the NIST project, Public uh, Big Data Working Group. And they have pretty interesting patterns as to how you use computers to do important things in business. Uh, the next set of applications are science, where actually the whole area is called cyber infrastructure. And again, we have a, a use, uses pattern which are NIST developed for scientific applications, for scientific data analysis. And we come back to artificial intelligence. In the last uh, set on application, we tried to characterize them. We tried to put them all together and chop them up into parts and components and labels and features and things. We do stress the importance of the Internet of Things as a driver of clouds and a driver of uh, big data applications. And we look at different types of MapReduce suggested uh, by the applications. Finally, well, fi finally on this particular a slide, it's not finally in the slide set, it's because we're only on the overall summary four. We get up to six. Uh, we look at parallel computing. Uh, we compare big data and simulations, both of which use parallel computing, but in somewhat different ways. And we discuss what's hard. Actually, it's pretty important to know what's hard. Some things are quite easy. If everything is independent, it's pretty easy to do parallel computing. If everything is all mixed up and working together, it's not so hard, easy. Okay. End of this four summary of four sets of slides. Okay, storage. That's the next set of slides. We look at various approaches to cloud data, compare it with HPC data systems. We discuss repositories and file systems and data lakes, a recent common term in the in the cloud environment. We discuss again high performance computing and clouds. We uh, introduce the Branscom pyramid which is a pretty old idea, but quite interesting. Explains about uh, how uh, how the you get a trade-off between functionality and size of the computer. We gain contrast supercomputers versus clouds, and we discuss in general what you need to do scientific computing. Then there are a set of slides comparing data analytics with simulations. We look at the how the applications are made up and how they differ and are similar. We look at the implication for software, including the language in which you write the software. Next a set of slides are in a rather different area, they're jobs, which at least if you're a student is relevant. We compare computer engineering, uh, cloud computing, data science, data engineering, and also note that uh, design is growing in importance in industry. All right, here we have the last summary slide, each, and it's this summarizes again three slide sets. Uh, the they're each describing the future, to, uh, different parts of it, or at least components that are conveniently grouped here. The first is um, uh, we look at the cloud computing hype cycle and its priority matrix. That's just because it's the emerging feature of clouds. It's got a lot of future features of clouds. The, we look at, in particular, at hyperscale computing, the very largest uh, computing systems needed for the very largest data. We look at what we've mentioned already, serverless computing and function as a service. We look at cloud native, native computing. 
So that's really programming and your cloud application. So it takes the best advantage of clouds. Then we have microservices. We come back and uh, discuss a little. As I pointed out, they're uh, very popular at the moment. Uh, the next set of slides focuses on blockchain and security, two critical issues. And the final set of slides is very short. It discusses fault tolerance, which is pretty important. And uh, we unfortunately really don't do it justice in these lectures. Thank you very much. That's the end of the summary of the summaries. Thank you.